Hi everybody, this is Mr. Folly, and welcome to Excel Podcast 13.1. We're going to talk about equilibrium, and briefly a little tip of the hat to Roger Ebert with the uh, Let's Go to the Movie theme. We're going to learn that equilibrium is dynamic, which means reactions turn to products, and then products turn to reactants, and reactions turn to products, products turn to reactants, and then it happens at the same time. And then we're going to learn that rates are equal, and equilibrium what's rates are what's equal. And then we're going to learn what an equilibrium expression is, which is either KC or sometimes shown as KEQ. Um, and that equilibrium expressions are in molarity. And that solids and liquids are not in K expressions. And what Q, quotient, and K ratio are. So let's get to it. Uh-oh. Equilibrium. Equal rates forward and backward. This is kind of the equal part. The rates are equal in the forward and back part. So in my classroom, first hour, I have 24 people. Deet. Bell rings, 24 people leave, 24 different people come in. So what happens is, as 24 people go out, 24 people come in, and it looks like, if you just took pictures of my room every now and then, that there were always 24 people. But if you look closely, there are 24 different people. Um, same thing happens with sugar on the bottom of iced tea. If I have a couple of chunks of sugar, crystals of sugar, and dissolved tea, or dissolved sugar in the tea, what happens is um, one crystal precipitates out and the other one dissolves. So the dissolved one precipitates, precipitate one dissolved. And if you could put a little radioactive marker, which is literally what they do, they put little radioactive markers on here. So if you start out with 10 radioactive markers, and then you check to see if there's any radioactivity in here, they go, oh, look, there is. That means it jumps up and down. And when I worked at car wash, my other equilibrium example in real life is when I worked at the car wash, no one laughed the, lasted the car wash more than four weeks. So every four weeks, someone would get canned. And of course, they had to hire someone new, except for me, who was there for six years. Woohoo! Wasn't I a hero? And my favorite car wash employee, who I wish I would have stayed forever, his name was Eugene. And Eugene was the nicest guy I ever met, and I think he lived in a house he built in the woods on the way between my house and the car wash. And he invited me to his dinner to his house for dinner once, and he had like five kids or something like that working at the car wash. Nice, nice guy. And he said, you want to go over to my house for dinner? It'll be fun. I'm like, sure, what do you have in Eugene? And he said, possum. I'm like, you hunt possum? Sometimes I just find them. And believe it or not, that could be a dead possum, because I've seen a dead possum, not at Eugene's house. I passed on that one and did that. So if equilibrium is dynamic... That means once you reach equilibrium, once I've got that sugar cube here and the stuff here, it keeps precipitating and reforming. So it never stops reactions, keep going on and on and on. And then, or you get like the creepy thing right here because there's a white suburban that's, oh wow, that's a white suburban saying, hey, you want some candy? Don't take candy from strangers. It's bad. Bad people. Equilibrium expressions. Equilibrium concentrations are constant, so a ratio of products over reactants exists. So their concentrations are constant. So remember how, if I went back to this, this would be a constant 3 molar, but which 3 moles would be in here would change. So a ratio of products over reactants exists. So product 1 raised to its coefficient times product 2 raised to its coefficient over reactant 1 raised to its coefficient times reactants 2 over its coefficients, and then dot, dot, dot. You could have more products than that. KEQ is a constant. So KC, because of K, is the equilibrium constant. R reactants, PR products, and if you put something in brackets, that means it's unit similarity. So the best way to make this make sense is to do a bunch of them. So if you look at this guy right here, products, big C, coefficient, little c, big D, coefficient, little d. Now notice these guys, big A, little a, big B, little d, little d. These are all aqueous. And the state of matter does matter. So KC expressions do not include values for solids or liquids since their concentrations are constant and don't change. So that seems kind of hard to imagine. So imagine I have a big brick of salt. I'll call it a salt lick. My neighbor has a salt lick that he puts in his backyard because he likes to have the deer there. So if a deer comes along... And he starts lapping up the salt. And it tastes salty and deer like salt. So if it's that big, and then what if it's just smaller? After it's cleaned up the salt lick a little bit and it's a little smaller, and another deer comes along. Now it's going to be hard for its tongue to reach there, but you know it's going to. 
Will it be saltier or less salty? It'll be the same amount of saltiness. So solids have the same concentration all the time. Their concentrations don't change. Another example would be water. If I have pure water, can I make it waterier? Can I make pure water less watery? No, I can't. So solids and liquids don't do that. OK. Um, give the K expressions for the following. So number one, K, and you don't have to put the C there. Sometimes you can put KEQ. KEQ equals products. Oops, no solids. Zinc plus 2. Sorry, this didn't format right. Zinc plus 2, that's aqueous, so that's included. Over, oops, solid zinc, that's going away. Over tin plus 2. That's it for number 1. Number 2. Products, KEQ equals products. I should check to make sure these are balanced. 1N, 1N, 4Hs. This, isn't, this doesn't balance the way it is. Oh. Hmm. Well, we'll pretend since this is an impossible equation, we'll just go with it. It's balanced already. Oops. So KQ is your product, which would be NH3. Now, what about gases? Can gases have different concentrations? Absolutely. Um, the kid in your second hour class smells a lot. So if this is the kid in your second hour class and he smells, that stink goes everywhere. And if you're the first person here, Hi, I'm happy to be here. Then you smell it the worst. Uh, but the next person, it's a little bit lighter, and that's like, hmm, do I smell something? Hmm. And then over here, it's like, this class is great. Nobody smells at all, except for my hair it makes me look like I'm Iron Man, but that's okay. So, all right. So gases do have concentration, so that's why they're included. And then chloride, Cl negative. Boop, 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 boop. Over here. Solid, not going to put it in the expression. And a positive in there because it's aqueous. OH negative in there because it's aqueous. Hmm. So what I'm missing here is H2O, which is weird. But that's okay. Number three. Fe plus three plus I negative yields Fe plus two plus I2 solid. Now on this one, I will balance it. Um, and this would take a two here. And we'll pretend the charges are fine. So here's what I'll do. Products, KEQ equals a products. That's not there because it's a solid. Fe plus 2. And over here, I'm going to have Fe plus 3. And then 2i, so it would be i negative squared. Not too bad. Not all reactions are at equilibrium. If a reaction can get to equilibrium, it's going there now. So things spontaneously go to equilibrium. That means delta G is negative until you get to the equilibrium part. The ratio of products over reactants at any time is called Q. Q is quotient. The formula for Q is products over reactants raise their coefficients. Hey, that's the same thing. So what's special about K? K equals Q if Q is at equilibrium. My abbreviation for equilibrium, although I can't write it very well, is EQ. If Q equals KEQ, the reaction's at equilibrium. If Q is bigger than K, so remember, we're talking about Q, which is products over reactants. If Q is greater than KEQ, that means Q is too big. Well, if Q is too big, I have too many products, right? So how do I get rid of products? Turn them into reactants. Okay? So that's that part right there if Q is too big. If Q is too small, if it's too small, that means I would have too many reactants. Oh, how do I get rid of my reactants? Turn them into products. Either way, the reaction is on its way to equilibrium. All right. So K is 0.571. And then I've got these concentrations. So the first thing I'm going to do is put in, again, the one that I should have water in there. But water is, I'll go ahead and throw it on there, H2O liquid. Why am I not going to include H2O liquid in my equilibrium expression? It's a liquid. Its concentration doesn't change. So I'm going to write Q this time. Q is NH3, and I include NH3 because it's a gas. Something can stink more than something else. And chloride, Cl negative, over NH4, ooh, not NH4Cl because it's a solid and its concentration can't change, over Na positive and OH negativo. So now I'm going to drop those numbers in there. NH3 is 2. Chloride is 0.75. 
over Na positive is 0.1 and OH negative is 0.55. Now I'm going to have to ask my calculator. Calculator, have batteries that work. That calculator doesn't work. Calculator, have batteries that work. So 2 times 0.75, notice no exponents because it don't have any coefficients, divided by 0.1, divided by 0.55. Everything on the bottom you divide. So I get 27.3. Now notice 27.3 is bigger than 0.571. So Q is bigger than K. So if Q is bigger than K, I have too many products. So shift left to reactants. Review. Equilibrium is the abbreviation, or EQ is the abbreviation for equilibrium. Hey, isn't that, that just great? Equilibrium is dynamic. EQ is equal rates, not amounts. K is a constant that can only change with temperature. K equals products over reactants, raised to a coefficient, which I didn't have enough of them for you. Solids and liquids are not in the K expression. And Q is products over reactants at the same time. So that is it. And I hope you all go see a movie for good old Roger Ebert. And that is it. Toodle.